So this is number four in our Pilates flow workouts. So make sure you've done numbers one to three before you get to here, because otherwise the whole sequence won't make sense. It's really important you do all of the workouts. So this one is all about core, glute, a little bit of glute work, but also um, it's gonna stretch out the front thigh muscles as well. So this is a good section. And we're gonna get lots of upper body work. It's an all over body workout just in this 10 minutes. So let's get going. We're gonna start off on our hands and knees. You wanna tuck your elbows in, work the shoulder blades down the back of your rib cage. And we're gonna start with um, a nice easy forward and back movement. Now I'm gonna show you three different levels. So round one, I'll show you one level, round two, the next, and then round three, the last level. So you're gonna slide forwards and backwards, connect your pelvic floor, lifting through your center. And then you're gonna walk the plank. So I call this walking the plank. So you put your elbow down, then your other elbow, then you come up onto your hand, and then you reverse it. So you go elbow, elbow, hand, and hand. And all the way you're doing that, you're trying to move your shoulders, yeah? You then do a press up. So you tuck the elbows in. Look how I do a press up. I bring my chest through my arms, lower down, tucking the elbows in, engage the pelvic floor, and then lift back up. That's round one. Number two, you do that with a slightly further forward position. So again, you're gonna move forwards, backwards, and then you're gonna walk it. So elbow, elbow, hand, hand, reverse it, elbow, elbow, hand, hand, and then press. Tuck the elbows in, lower down, and lift back up. Then you've got the full version. Whoa, this is tough. So you're gonna move forwards, backwards, and you're gonna walk it. Elbow, elbow, hand, hand, reverse it. And then you're gonna press, make sure your core stays nice and tight, tuck your elbows in, lower down, and then lift back up. And then should we do it again? Maybe, let's try it. Are you ready? Find your level. Go forwards, backwards, and then elbow, elbow, hand, hand, reverse it, elbow, elbow, hand, hand, press, lower down, lift back up, and then we're going to lower all the way down to the floor, and we're going to go into a dart position. So open through your chest, and for the dart position, I do this with my hands turned out. And traditionally, you'll see hands down by your side. But this helps to externally rotate the shoulder joint. It gives your chest a nice open feeling, and it puts you into better postural position and works the muscle extensors better. And it will extend and pull your arms out and give you a lovely length. So turn the palms up. You can actually keep your fingertips on the floor if you want to, or take the hands up. I quite like doing it with my fingertips down. And then your head and shoulders are lifted off the floor, just a tiny way there, you're not going high yet, it's just a little way off the floor, apple under your chin, now bring your heels almost together and lift your feet off the floor, but don't again lift high, very low, and just really pull your legs out from your hip sockets, now lift up through your core, this is so important, you stop a fight, you stop a wee, you lift your belly and you feel your belly lifting away from the floor, and you're using your core because your lower back should not strain as you're doing this, give me two more breaths in this position, lift up from your pelvic floor into your belly, if it feels too much just relax the legs down, inhale exhale, if it's still too much relax the forehead down, but engage your core still, lift up through from your pelvic floor and into your belly, and then we're going to go into a quad stretch. I know my head's down and I'm not talking to you very much uh, in terms of looking at you. And you might have to just watch some of these exercises first before you do them, just so that you get a good idea. But now we're doing a quad stretch and I'm just moving my foot in and out. And this is important because you're trying to get lots of lovely length in the front of your thigh. And often we've got tightness in different spots. So if you find a point of tightness by moving your heel, find a point where it feels really tight, hold your leg at that position, engage your core again. So stop a fart, stop a wee, lift your belly up and away from the floor, then push your right hip into the floor and push your kneecap away towards your back wall and then find another point and do it again. Lift up through your pelvic floor and into your belly, push your kneecap away. And then we're gonna change legs and do it on the other side. So move your foot around, and often you find one leg is tighter than the other. Now, if you cannot reach your foot, you can always stick a towel around your foot and do it with a towel instead. To keep pushing your hip into the floor, engage your pelvic floor, lift up through your center, keep lengthening your leg, keep pushing the hip down to the floor, hold a point of tightness, lift up, engage again, push the hip in, slide the leg down your mat, pushing your kneecap away. Do not let it go into your lower back. You've got to keep pulling your belly up and away from the floor as you do this. Keep pulling up through the back of that pelvic floor, and then release. 
And they're going to come up and go into a down dog position. So you're going to lift up and pull back. Now, you may struggle with down dogs. So we're going to start this off, and I want you to feel it. So you don't need to watch me. It doesn't matter whether your body looks different to mine. I want you to feel the position. So we're going to start off by curling the toes up underneath, and you're going to work your way back onto the balls of the feet, and I want your knees bent, and I want you to stick your bottom up in the air, and I want you to try and feel length right at the top of your hamstrings, and you're trying to stick your bottom up so you feel a pull right underneath your bottom, right at the top of your hamstrings. You then want to have weight in the heel of your hand, and you want, you want to bring your chest through your arms, and you're trying to lengthen your neck, and it's like a tortoise pulling its head out of the shell. You push your head, the crown of your head, towards your fingertips, you slide your shoulder blades down, and you create length in your neck. So you're creating as much length from your tailbone to your head, and hold that position. Obviously, if you're nice and flexible, and you've done lots of down dogs before, you can straighten out and pull back. Breathe, inhale, exhale. But what's important is that that tailbone is up. Yeah, you're lifting your tailbone up. Now from here, we're gonna come forwards and cross the right leg in front of the left. Okay, now you might find you need to do this with your knee bent. That's absolutely fine. The longer your leg is, the harder it is. So that's going to be a harder position to adopt. So you find a position that you can. Now, you're trying to bring your body square to your mat. So bring your shoulder around and pull your hip around as well. So you're trying to bring yourself square to your mat. Sit. Well done. And then we're going to come back to the start. And we're going to do it again. Are you ready? Here we go. Move forwards. Move backwards. Walk it. We're going to go left hand first this time. Reverse it, and then press, lower down, and lift. Do it again. Move forwards, backwards, walk it. Use your core all the way through. Keep lifting through your center, and press, lower down, and lift. Round three. Obviously, you're staying at the same level. I'm just showing you variations. You stay at the level that you know is right for you. Breathe, and then press. And then lower all the way to the floor into that dark position. Lengthen your arms, lengthen your legs, squeeze into your buttocks, open through your chest, apple under your chin. Keep lifting up through your pelvic floor and into your belly. Keep working length into your legs. Squeeze your bottom. Breathe, breathe, breathe. If you need to do it in a softer version, you can relax the head down. Just do the legs. Lift up through your pelvic floor. Work your shoulders down. Breathe, breathe, breathe. Pull those legs out from your hip sockets. You can see I'm kind of wiggling my legs around because it feels quite nice to do that. You can do that too. But make sure you've got that lift up from your pelvic floor and into your belly. You're working your shoulder blades down. You're breathing and then into your quad stretch. Take a hold of your right leg, push your hip into the floor, lengthening through the front of your thigh. And again, you can keep moving it around or you can just hold it still now because you might find you've released some of those tight spots and you can just hold still and push away and then change. I'm doing it a bit more quickly this time because you've already had a long stretch in this position. But doing multiple stretches is always good. It means you get a chance to lengthen the leg out again that way it's more likely to stay there the more you repeat it. And then we're going to pull back into that down dog. So remember, bend your knees if you need to. Stick that tailbone up. Press your chest through your arms. Work the shoulder blades down. Send your tailbone up. Press the crown of the head towards your fingertips and breathe. And again, breathe. Relax. One more breath. Inhale, exhale. And then from here, come forwards, you're going to cross your left leg in front of your right. Remember, you can do it with a bent leg. You can put the right knee on the floor. Pull your left hip over to the left and bring your shoulders square to your mat. So you're pulling your left shoulder back. Hold this position. Inhale, exhale, breathe. Keep lifting in through your center. Keep breathing. And then we're going to finish off in a little child's pose. So I want you to sit back into your child's pose and you can stay on the floor and I'm just going to chat to you. You can just hear my voice. Well done. That's another workout done. Don't forget to comment uh, in the comments below. Make sure that you uh, let us know that you've done your workout. You've now completed all four sections. That means when you go on to number five, you can do the whole thing together. Well done. You're doing really brilliantly. I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did enjoy it and for us to be able to make even more content for you, I'd really appreciate it. I'd love it in fact if you could subscribe and like the video and obviously if you want to make any comments as well because any comments you make we will be able to act on that and produce more material that you like.